Thanks, Brad. You know, I've been playing Battlefield as long as I can remember. And over the past 16 years, these games have come a long way. From 1942 to Bad Company to Battlefield 4 and up to Battlefield 1. And today, I'm taking on the most important mission objective I've ever been a part of. Telling all of you about Battlefield 5. I'm geared up, ready to go. My squad's out there, so let's deploy because we are live in London. Let's get the show started. to the Battlefield 5 live reveal. I'm your host for this evening, Trevor Noah, and I'm so excited to be here introducing this new edition of Battlefield, which for some reason everyone has already assumed is Battlefield 5. I mean, and not Battlefield V. Could be V, why not V? Battlefield V could be just as good. Yeah, I do love that fans on Twitter are actually changing the Vs in their profiles for this game, something my mother did many years ago ahead of the curve. And most people don't know this, but the V in my name is actually a 5. Yeah, my name is actually pronounced Trev5 or Noah. <laughs> Very unique. As a huge fan of these games, I've always loved how captivating the battlefield is. And today, you'll see that Battlefield 5 has the most immersive battlefield ever. If you've ever been in a battle with me, you know that I'm the most dedicated support class you will ever meet. I'm in the mud, repairing the tanks. You know, I'm laying down mines as tank rushes come in. One time, I even repaired a plane mid-air that might be alive, but I'm sticking with it. <laughs> because you see, I love that glorious joy of being the uncelebrated hero in a battle. And this game is going to have tons of moments like that. There are so many new and exciting features coming to you in Battlefield 5 that you will learn about today. The next level of large-scale multiplayer, Battlefield 5 single-player war stories, and we'll start showing you the epic post-launch journey all players will experience when the game is finally released. And you know we've got some other surprises, so why waste time? Let's get straight into it and get the show started. I'm joined now by the producers of Battlefield 5, Andreas Morel, Ryan MacArthur, and Lars Gustafsson, everybody. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm not here as a professional anything. I am here as a gamer. I am here as a Battlefield player. I am here to ask only the questions I am interested in. You have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I knew it, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. Uh, you are taking players back to where the Battlefield franchise started, World War II. Now, at this point, are you, are you like those guys, you know, those elderly pilots that they find on an island in the Pacific, you know, who think that the war never ended? Is that who you are right now? It, it did. It ended. <laughs> you told me. Wish I had to break it to you, Jeffrey Lars. <laughs> <laughs> but Lars, why, why go back to that now? To be honest with you, it's really... I mean, we yearned for years to go back to where it all started about 16 years ago. And, you know, technology has evolved and the team has gained so much experience that this is really the game we wanted to build and that we did. It's, it's really something the, the guys back home at DICE are really passionate about, the whole era. Uh, just ask Mr. Battlefield, he was, he was there. <laughs> right, Mr. Battlefield, that's Lars's nickname, by the way. I'm known as Madame Battlefield. <laughs> Now, play players have experienced World War II in, in so many movies and in games. It's really difficult to come up with a new and fresh perspective. What perspective are you bringing to it with this version of Battlefield? Andreas, will this be more Saving Private Ryan or Inglorious Bastards? So, we've seen all the movies, you know? We, we play the games, we've been there. I'm, I'm pretty sure at least I can navigate half of France without a map just by playing the games. <laughs> so, so, for us, going back to, to, to where it all began for us is really about delivering a World War II experience that no one's ever, never seen before. Really kind of hitting on the unseen uh, locations, the untold stories, the unplayed uh, moments. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's really taking you on the journey from the start. And at a go, you will be able to play the German forces, the British forces, and we want to take you on that journey, you know, to 
exotic places like freezing Scandinavia, it's kind of our <laughs> home turf, but in Norway, or, or rugged deserts where the battles took place in Northern Africa. Why not to the, the ruins of the once so beautiful Rotterdam? So it's really to take you on a journey. And we want to do this with a kind of a fresh and modern take. And uh, so really hopefully surprise the players, but also to please them. You've given me a sneak peek and so many words come to my mind. I mean, intense, immense, powerful. Ryan, do you have a specific way that you want players to see this battlefield? Well, I think the best way we can describe it is, is immersive. I mean, this, this needs to feel like the most immersive battlefield that, that players have ever played. I mean, we want them to exploit the battlefield in ways they've never been able to before. I mean, when you look at the chaotic multiplayer that the franchise is known for and, and sort of fan classics like Conquest and some of the new modes that the guys are working on like Airborne, um, you know, we're going back with war stories, sort of that uh, anthology storytelling that we had, uh, we, we built in BF1 and telling new stories about men and women that change history. Um, I mean, we get to tell everyone today that, that co-op is back in Battlefield 5, and that's a huge thing for us. Uh, and this is just the beginning. I mean, launch is just the beginning for this game, and we really want to take players on a journey through World War II. It always feels like it's a journey. That's what it always feels like with Battlefield. Like, one thing I loved about the game was how the maps and the world was constantly changing. Mm. You know, it felt like my bedroom at home. I never knew what to expect. <laughs> and I think when looking at this game, Andreas, what's your vision to take this to the next level? So we're really building on what we started with previous games. It's, it's really about giving players uh, the most immersive world that they could enter. Uh, you, you should really be grounded in it. Expanding on the movement set that we, we've done so well, uh, really pushing all these new features that we're going to be talking about. Right, it sounds great. Uh, I'm genuinely excited. I have a few highlights that I'm looking forward to. Let's dive into it and talk about some of the gameplay. Here to do that is Daniel Berlin. In Battlefield 5, we're expanding the toolbox for the player, giving you access to new abilities to create your own and brand new Battlefield moments. Now there's a deeper connection between the player and the world around you. You will be physically pushed by the shockwaves from explosions. You can experience completely new ways to traverse and tactically maneuver across the battlefield with our overhauled movement system. Our renowned destruction will rip up the terrain, leave chunks of masonry hanging from destroyed buildings, or have high caliber rounds rip straight through walls to take out the enemies hiding inside. We're also bringing back classic modes such as Majority Rule Conquest, but we also have new modes and experiences for our unique take on World War II. We're bringing back operations with a bang, and we're calling it Grand Operations. Here, you'll experience multiple game modes as you fight over multiple maps, all wrapped within our narrative journey through historically inspired battles from World War II. With the return of our anthology format for single-player war stories, with new characters to meet, and untold stories to discover. Back to you, Trevor. Now, Daniel just talked about a new multiplayer experience called Grand Operations, and I'm really excited because it sounds to me like you can pilot a giant grand piano <laughs> like a tank. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that's what it is, right, Andreas? I'm not sure about the piano, but it's, <laughs> it's definitely massive. It's, uh, it's really about reliving all this power fantasies from World War II, like airborne being power dropped in, and it's operations from Battlefield 1, but bigger. It's, it's really great. Yeah, I mean, what we want players to feel like is sort of a dynamic player-impacted experience take, taking place over four fictional days. I mean, day one starts with you jumping out of an airplane and uh, with the objective to, to destroy the enemy artillery, with that enemy sort of entrenching themselves to defend and protect. Uh, and depending on how the outcome of day one goes for you, uh, as, the two, as the two main forces start to battle over day two in a game of breakthrough, uh, with the number of lives you have left remaining, depending on what you did the day before. And then as you continue to push on into new locations, we're going to see things like Conquest Assault, where players continue to fight for that, that terrain. Um, and assuming, you know, when we see these, these players end up in a giant stalemate, then they're going to enter day four, which is final stand. And I mean, this is, this is sort of tired, muddy, no resources left. You've got just you, your squad, and one, and one clip, and you all fight to the last man standing with the weight of the world on your shoulders. So this is a game mode that you may never see if your games are not in a stalemate. You may never get to that fourth map and fourth story then. Exactly. That's an exciting way to play the game. Uh, I, I want to know when we can see more of that. Two weeks. EA Play, Los Angeles. Yeah. You get hands-on multiplayer for the first time if you're there. 
So even the reveal of grand operations spans across multiple events. <laughs> wow, <laughs> nice one, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have to say, I, I, I heard you guys say that uh, co-op is back, and that's one of my favorite aspects of Battlefield 1. Lars, can you tell me more about that mode? I definitely can. I mean, I'm happy to say that for the first time since Battlefield 3, co-op is back, and we're calling it Combined Arms. And here it's yet another way to experience that Battlefield sandbox, you know, next to our war stories and the multiplayer. And what we want to do here is to allow you and up to three players to go online and step into those shoes of the Pathfinders, those paratroopers that go in behind the enemy lines. And, and here you really only have the soldier next to you, <laughs> maybe not Brian, but yeah, maybe the soldier next to you <laughs> to rely upon as you move forward, since, you know, getting detected might mean death. And you will soon be struck by resource scarcity. You need to find the tools and find your way to the objective. So stakes are high and you, you need to kind of assess, can I push through or do we need to extract early? It's, it's kind of win or lose, it's up to you. I've been a huge fan of War Stories, um, the single player campaign in Battlefield 1. Um, what, I, what I truly enjoyed about it was I felt like I was learning about the stories behind the war and playing through the stories of the war, and it didn't always end well. And what I loved is because of that history element, like I, for instance, I told my little brother, I said, hey, if mom ever catches you playing, just say this is a history class that you're doing <laughs> on the console. And then what I'd do is I'd tell my mom he was gonna do that so she would know that I was always her favorite. And <laughs> what was great was seeing the story. Lars, like, how is single player gonna change in Battlefield V? <laughs> Don't tell this to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Well, aren't you changing? I mean, to me, uh, I'm happy that you like the war stories. And for us, the war stories are really our opportunity to put the war into perspective. It's really about those human and untold stories of the war. And we try to portray those kind of real and relatable people facing epic warfare. And it's, it's Battlefield after all, so we'll be talking a lot here today about the gameplay improvements. So player agency is key, so you can create your own Battlefield moments. And, at the bottom line, it's about allowing you to witness the Second World War, but through the eyes of the men and women that changed the world. Yeah, I mean, as you, as you can see here, I mean, this is one of the war stories that we're going to be talking about first. I mean, this is our Nordlease story. Um, this is the story of a young woman um, who is part of the Norwegian resistance fighters uh, fighting the German occupation uh, during World War II. I mean, this is uh, an exploration of emotion and feelings. Um, yeah. It's a family story. Right? Um, you know, and, and this not only sort of really grounds the players in the reality, but sort of sets the context of the World War II that we're trying mm. to create at DICE. It's not often that you find stories that connect with the emotion of the characters in the story. Uh, instead of just focusing on the explosions and the gunfire, you see that look in her eyes. You want to know what she's thinking, what she's experiencing in that story. Why was it so important for you to focus on the people behind the stories from war? Well, I think it's, it's important to tell, you know, sort of uh, believable and sort of honest stories and really sort of set the context and sort of main that, maintain that connection to the world that we're trying to create. I think it's important for, for people to understand where we're coming from and what our, what our particular take is on World War II. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go back to Daniel now to cover what you'll take to the battlefield with you. In Battlefield V, we're aiming to mirror the immense arsenal of the Second World War. This was a period that saw an explosion in terms of innovation when it comes to weapons and vehicles. You will get to fly iconic airplanes, engage in incredible tank battles, and also unleash secret weapons from World War II. Weapons that are powerful enough to turn the tide of any battle. And with the new fortification system, you can be more strategic than ever in how you choose to defend or advance through the terrain. Back to you guys. You know, in playing Battlefield, I, I know everyone in the audience will agree with me, people at home as well. I've always been impressed by the level of realism in the game. Um, I remember once I was playing with a friend who served in special forces, and we were talking about our favorite guns, and I was talking about the recoil and what I liked about the sights versus other guns, and he turned to me at one point and he said, oh, where did you serve? And I, I felt embarrassed because I was like, oh, Battlefield 3, that's, that's where I was. <laughs> And instead of him being angry, he was like, I didn't know that there was a game that was that immersive, something that really was as true to real without being a war simulation as possible. Guys, tell me about some of your favorite weapons in the game, some of the new vehicles that will be available in Battlefield V. I think at first, just by going back to this era, it, we can, the pool of hardware that we can choose from is immense. There's so much there. And uh, for me, being a vehicle guy, it's really quite a simple choice. It's the Tiger One. The Tiger One tank. Yeah. 
I think it's the most iconic tank from this era. I just think it's amazing. What, what, do, you, what do you like about it? That's a weird choice for me. <laughs> Have you seen it? I think it's the best. What, like the looks? A bit, but also are it's... You saying that, are it's... you checking out a tank? <laughs> Have you been in a battle with that? Yeah, but I've never looked at it. I'm like, if I'm on the outside, I'm dying. If I'm on the inside, I'm concentrating. When, when are you looking... You should, when are you doing this? You should try a third-person camera. And just run around the tank dying, and no, they, everyone's no, going to no, be like, no, who's no. that guy looking at the tank? It's... Uh, come on, it's beautiful. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> so, Andreas is a tank guy. Uh, Mr. Battlefield Lars, how about you? I'm with you, Trevor. Yeah, you I'm, think he's I'm, weird, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we've been trying to hide it, but it's, <laughs> now it's out. <laughs> now, the fact that I'm also a support player. I, I can't hit the barn from the inside, so I need the big clips. And for me, the MG42 is really the weapon I play in the playtest. Right, my man. It has that iconic sound that, you know, sends fear all over the map. And, and another part of it is the new kind of mm. uh, system which uh, Daniel talked about for uh, high-caliber weapons. So previously, I could make the same impact as a pistol, pre basically. But this time around, it comes with a punch. So where the pistol gets stuck in the wall, I can rip through. So I can finally make a difference on the battlefield. Hashtag no more knocking. I like this. <laughs> yes. All right, so we've got I'm a tank guy. We've got a, a weapons guy. Ryan? Uh, well, sort of embarrassing to admit, uh, unlike Lars, I can't hit a barn, period. So for me, um, <laughs> it's the toolbox. Um, in Battlefield 1, all players had a gas mask. Uh, in BF, uh, Battlefield 5, we're going to replace that gas mask with a toolbox. So that means I can run around the battlefield with my toolbox, setting up fortifications and, uh, and, and sort of really changing the dynamic of the battlefield so that these guys uh, who can actually hit something, uh, I can offer, offer some value on the, on the playing field. Wait, wait, wait. So fortifications, you, you just skimmed over that, but what is, what is fortifications? Well, I mean, this, as, as, a, as a support player, I, mean, I think this is, this is something you really love. It's something I, I, I think is a great addition to the game. Um, uh, it really allows you to sort of, for players who want to focus on the objective. I mean, this is, this is something you can sort of pull out your toolbox. You can uh, you know, build reinforcements. You can uh, reinforce buildings that Andreas has destroyed with his tank. Um, you can build foxholes and set up machine guns so people like Lars can sit there and, and, and camp out at choke points. I mean, this is going to uh, change the strategic way people pay, both as attackers and defenders. Is that, was that in response to the gaming community? Because I know, as a Battlefield gamer, I always wanted what I didn't have. So first I was going, hey guys, I need destruction. I need places to fall apart. And then at some point I was like, too much destruction, too much destruction. I, like, there's nothing yeah. left. Was, was this a response? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of esteemed players in here in the studio today and in the community overall who, at some point, especially when we are testing, kind of, we came to a point where the level was leveled. Right. <laughs> the world was leveled and you couldn't advance. So basically, this is to counter that and give you an additional kind of toolbox to, to rebuild. And then you and I can come in as heroes again, and they fortify. We come there, and we add an, an extra heavy machine gun or an AA gun. So it's kind of teamwork once again, and we are the celebrated heroes. We are the celebrated hero heroes we deserve to be. I yeah, like yeah, that, Lars. Yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, <laughs> now that we've learned about the tools, let's hear about the company. Here to tell us more, please welcome Natalie Eck. Trevor, and yes, the company is something that is completely new to Battlefield 5. It's your personal collection of customized soldiers, weapons, and vehicles that you can tailor and grow as you play. The company is the heart and soul of your personal experience, and the choices you make here for your company actually matters. Not only will your choices affect the way you look, but also how your weapons and vehicles play. As you squad up with your friends, make sure to pick a soldier that complements the rest of your squad to take on the battle ahead. And during the game, adapt to the change in circumstances by, by calling your company and bringing in the right soldier, weapon, or vehicle to suit your situation. Back to you, Trevor. Andreas, that, that, that really sounds awesome. Tell me more about the company and how it works, because you know, I, I know from my years in Battlefield that the group that really plays together stays together. Now, the company is something that we're super excited about. So for the first time, you can now create your own personal experience with the soldiers you take onto the battlefield. It's really up to you to decide how you want them to play and also how they, uh, how they look. So as you pl keep playing and you get better, your soldiers will get better with you. So, so give me an example of how this would impact me as a support class. 
So if you take your, your support class player you want and you start playing with that with that with that soldier and you start progressing him, you're going to unlock a, you know a set of new abilities, new perks, and sort of these new um, exotic ways to play the game as a support class. And then you know um, unlock new weapons for yourself to play. When you take that machine gun that Lars loves so much, uh, <laughs> and you level that machine gun up, you make the choices that matter, and then you decide, well, I think this needs its own custom paint job. So you sort of make that machine gun really make it your own, uh, and then you go in and you grab that that sort of iconic support outfit that you really want to wear going in the battle, you jump in with some friends and off you go. You know, it's funny you brought up customization because I've always believed in Battlefield, the team is important, but looking badass is the most important thing. <laughs> I think anyone who's been in war can agree with this. Um, <laughs> please tell me that I can customize my look to be properly badass in the Battlefield. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing looking good. Right. Um, so I think, you know, part of the tactical gameplay that comes with Battlefield, I mean, what we want to do is give you the ability to create your own personal identity. So, uh, you know, no more anonymous soldiers. Uh, you know, this is your soldiers in their boots going into battle. Uh, their own weapons, customized the way that you want to do it, um, the gear that you want them to wear. Um, I mean, this is, this is going to feel like it's your own personal arsenal. And obviously, I want to get as much of that arsenal as I can possibly get. How do, how do I even begin getting all of this gear? You play the game. I mean, for what we want players is you get rewarded for playing the game. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, it's pretty short. It's whatever you want to progress towards. Your company, your class, or a specific item, you play the game. And we set out to commit to that you always feel rewarded for what you do, whatever you play. So you just play to, to unlock these items. Then I guess I have to ask, and I know it's a sensitive subject, but I'm still going to go there. Is this game going to be pay to win? No, you can't pay to get an unfair gameplay advantage. What if I have a lot of money? <laughs> Call me. <laughs> so you, you, you won't be can't. able to pay? No. So in Battlefield, it's always been about balance rock, paper, scissor gameplay. And it still is. You really have to, like Les was saying, you have to play the game uh, to earn new gear, and skill is really key. Okay, but what about um, Premium Pass? Will it be one of those games where I have to shell out another 50 bucks six months after I've bought the game? Is that how it works? Well, I guess I get, I get the fun part of not taking any more of your <laughs> money as well, but um, no, there's no more Premium Pass in this game. This means uh, wow. no more. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, thank you. I'm, uh, <laughs> it's the least I can do. <laughs> Thank you. Bro. Yes. I mean, this means no more paying for maps, no more paying for modes. Um, <laughs> you know, this is something the community has asked for. This is something the team really believes in. Um, so what we want is a game where people stay together, they play the games together, and they get to go on this journey through World War II together. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That means I finally lose my nickname, No Maps Noah. This is so <laughs> dope. <laughs> all right, well, it's time to learn about what happens after the game launches. So to tell us all about live service, please welcome back Natalie and Daniel. So launch is really just the beginning. Tides of War is an epic journey that you and your company will take through World War II. It will bring you an evolving, diverse game that will grow over time as we immerse you and your company in different theaters of war. Playing Battlefield V is an experience unlike any other. It will differ from all previous Battlefield games. And the most important thing, it's open to all players. Yes, and there will always be new battles, new fronts, and rewards on the horizon. And by removing Premium Pass, we are keeping the community together. So this time, there will be no ex expansion packs, and all players will be able to take part in the same journey through Battlefield V. And with Tides of War, our players will experience themed chapters of World War II, each spanning over several months. And these will focus on key moments that impact the outcome of the conflict. Trevor? This sounds to me like a wild, full ride through World War II, but uh, Lars, like, how big of a journey will this be? How long is this train? <laughs> no, I mean, to, to put it into perspective, this was World War, and, I mean, to me, it's going to be a huge journey. Uh, I mean, we want to take you on that journey with chapters from the history, and at the end of it, we really want you to be kind of experiences daily, weekly and monthly events leading up to kind of the pinnacle of the grand operations and experience to achieve those special assignments, getting treated with extra rewards. So, so it, it is about keeping it fresh and constantly evolving since what we see here and talk about here today is, is just, just the beginning. And as you play it through, you start to be taken to a new horizon, new locations, new gameplay and I mean, 
stick in for the ride. It, it sounds like it's going to be one of those experiences where the more I play, the more cool stuff I can get. I, I get rewarded for my time. Is that going to be across different modes? It's, again, it's, it's really simple. You just have to play the game to earn new cool wow. gear. And it doesn't matter if it's multiplayer or combined arms. Uh, like, like you see here, you will be able to earn new vehicles, new weapons. It's going to be dog tags and soldier skins, weapon skin. It's all there to really customize your, your crew to, to really be standing out on the battlefield the way you want it to be. Right, it sounds amazing. And I only have one question, and that is, when does this all start? Well, uh, the game launches in October. Um, so starting November, running through uh, early 2019, we're going to start with our first chapter, uh, which is going to focus on the fall of Europe. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to explore sort of the German mechanized war machine as it pushes its way into Europe. Um, this is going to be live gameplay focused events. We're going to have thematic rewards tied to this. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, we can't wait to talk to the community more mm -hmm. about this between uh, as we lead up to launch. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie. You guys have definitely raised my analog stick, and I think we've waited long <laughs> enough. This is the most immersive <laughs> battlefield yet in a World War II you have never seen before, where launch is just the beginning of the journey. I'm done talking. I think it's time we see this thing. Are you, you all ready? Yeah. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, the reveal trailer for Battlefield 5. One. Wow. Wow. The car, the thing, the man, the boo. <laughs> you saw the thing, the man, the huh? I hope yep. they got insurance. That was insane. Do you see that? I did say it. That was, Andres, I don't feel like you saw it. I feel like uh -huh. you've seen it before. <laughs> I might have seen the it before. The person jumped on their back and yeah. then started shooting while moving on their back. Yeah. It's cool. That's all I can say. This is what happens when you live life in a tank, Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting. Give it up for that one more time. That was an amazing trailer. Oh, wow. So wait, so before we go, before we go, am, am I correct in saying there were some new animations there? There were some new moves yeah. that you could, you could do in the game? There's a few. Yeah. OK, um, thank you, Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Andreas. No, to be honest, as in, I think we should thank the team back home in yeah, Stockholm um, for huge call -out. helping us to get to this point. I think they are truly amazing. Yeah. And our fans, 
Again, yeah. we've been waiting for this moment for so long to be able to reveal what we've been working on. This is really packed with gameplay, and, and I mean, a lot of this is, is direct feedback from community, yeah. leading to a lot of these improvements. So it's a huge thank you for yeah. for the support, and once again, the team for doing an extraordinary job. As yeah. always, and I'm pretty sure the look on your face, you know, hits the mark they're going for. I'm yeah, sure that yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Give it up for the people in Stockholm, please. <laughs> Give it up for the in Stockholm. Wow. Wow, Battlefield 5 launches worldwide on October 19th. In the meantime, these guys are giving away free expansion packs in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. So just head to battlefield.com for all the details. And next up is EA Play on June 9th, where you'll see multiplayer for the very first time. I hope all of you are as excited as I am for Battlefield 5. To watch that trailer again, go to youtube.com forward slash battlefield. And if you want more info, join some of the team here with Xbox who are hosting an exclusive post show on mixer.com forward slash Xbox. That is our show for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. I'm Trevor Noah. Good night. Wow.